Drugs are one of the most profitable and valuable income sources for criminal bonds. Despite its illegality and health issues, its demand is high. Its trade is in black markets. Smugglers bring them in a country illegally and sell them to people. In the drug and crime world, the name of Pablo Escobar is very well known. Outside of the crime world, the name of Pablo Escobar is known for its huge wealth. Hello and welcome to another episode of our biography series. In today's episode, I'm going to introduce you with the cocaine king, Pablo Escobar. Pablo Emilio Escobar Gaviria, born on 1st December of 1949 in Rio Negro, Antioquia, Colombia. He was a Colombian drug lord and narco-terrorist. He was the founder of one of the biggest criminal organizations named Medellin Cartel. Medellin Cartel operated from 1972 to 1993 in Bolivia, Colombia, Panama, Central America, Peru, United States and Canada. At the zenith of its activities, Medellin Cartel exchanged multiple tons of cocaine and brought up to 60 million US dollars on a daily basis. He was raised in Medellin and left his studies in Universidad Autonoma Latinoamericana without graduating. After he quits his university's studies, he began engaging and joining in criminal activities. He was selling illegal cigarettes and fake lottery tickets and participated in motor vehicle theft. In 1970s, he started his serious crimes like working for drug smugglers, kidnapping and holding people for ransom. In the 1980s, it was estimated that Escobar led a monthly shipment of 70 to 80 tons of cocaine to America. In 1982, Escobar was elected as a member of the Chamber of Representatives. In this position, he was responsible for community projects such as construction of houses and football fields. In 1991, Escobar made a deal with Colombian government. He was afraid of going to American jails. Thus, he paid a 10 billion US dollar debt to the government. The Colombian government agreed to jail him wherever he wants and give him whoever he wants as a crew of the jail. He made a luxurious jail which had a futsal ground and artificial waterfall, etc. He spent five years in that jail and then when he heard that the government wants to move him to a more formal jail, he escaped from there. He was famous for his money and his wealth. He used to keep all his money in his house wall. As he kept his money in the wall, more than millions of dollars get ruined. After he escaped from his jail, he was forced to hide somewhere and he had no access to the public services for a long time. During this period, his daughter got sick and he burned a lot of money to keep her warm. He had a lot of respect and love for his daughter. Once his daughter asked him for a unicorn, Pablo bought a horse and put a horn and a pair of wings in the back of the horse with operation. The horse died because of infection. Pablo died in 1993, a day after his 44th birthday in his hometown. When Colombian National Police tried to arrest him, he committed suicide and shoot himself in the head with a gun. It was estimated that about 25,000 people attended his funeral. He was a Robin Hood-like figure for poor people in Colombia. His policy for achieving what he wanted was to eliminate whoever that came in his way. With this policy, he killed more than 4,000 people during his life. A tea lawyer and more than a thousand police officers are included in the list of people that he killed. That was our video for today. I hope that you enjoyed and learned something from it. Please subscribe to our channel if you didn't yet. Press the like button and hit the bell for further notification from our channel. And thanks for watching.